Hello. Welcome to an Alias 2021 deep dive session. During this session, we're going to be covering a new sub D workflow, selection sets, and enhancements to the transform tool. So let's just get going. Upon launching Alias 2021, you'll get this new sp splash screen. This new splash screen gives you five workflows to choose from. The newest one that we've added is the sub D workflow. And the sub D workflow includes a new shelf along the bottom with all of the self sub D tools, including selection options, importing, exporting, a couple of curve creation tools to get you started with some extrusions. We've got marking menus, so customized menus that are built for subdivision modeling, middle and right mouse button. We've got a whole series of hotkeys that kind of mirror the Maya product. Um, so users that might want to switch and, and use Alias for doing some of their automotive modeling um, will find that probably pretty beneficial. So one of the key things that we've done for 2021 is enhanced our transform tool. Now, not a lot of people use the transform tool in the past. It's been there for a long time. Um, typically, people use the transform move tool, but the transform tool previously had an option for pivot. And that was really the only mode. Now we've added a global option. So I'll explain the difference between the two. So one way to see the new manipulator is if you just create a primitive, something like a, a primitive plane, and drop that guy down over here. We've got the traditional manipulator tools, but what we also have is an in-plane manipulator. So if I want to move this and not move it off of his existing Y plane, I can move that guy around now and it's staying on that same Y plane. So we think that for a lot of new users, having access to a, a manipulator um, is a lot easier for them. They don't have to remember what each individual mouse button does. They can just interact with the manipulator on the screen. And I, and I think they're gonna find that uh, uh, pretty intuitive. For existing alias users though, if you wanna use your um, your left, middle, and right mouse button, so I'm just, I'm just clicking and dragging now, but if you wanna use your left, middle and right mouse button to make those moves, you, you can. So in addition to um, those kind of, of just simple manipulator changes, we've also added the ability to do what would be referred to as uh, uh, components or something less than an object, something less than a node. So in this case, I'm talking about things like CVs, edges, and hulls. So if we just make a quick uh, uh, sub D plane here and and turn the controls on. Another thing that we can do with this new manipulator, so by default, if you're using the sub D control panel, um, you get the new transform right at the top. And that new transform right at the top, that new transform has the global mode set. Now what the global mode does is when you select a group of entities, so for instance, if I select these two CVs, oops, I gotta be in pick CV so it knows I wanna pick vertexes. So then I can go into transform and I pick these two vertexes. Right now I can move those two vertexes. So I could go like this, I could move them up and down and you could never really do that before. You couldn't use anything other than an object. So something with a node at the top of it. So now we've added in the ability to be able to move multiple um, entities. So as you see here, as I select more entities or you know whether it's an edge or a vertice, the manipulator moves to the centroid of that. Now, what we've also done, if you look down here, there's an adjust manipulator mode. So if I hit the space bar and I click on this face, it now reorients the manipulator to that face. So basically it finds um, the least squares plane of, of whatever that face is. So if it's a twisted plane, because they don't always have to be right flat and planar, which is an easy solution like we have here. If they're twisted, it's just gonna find that least squares plane in the middle. And then when you hit the space bar again, you go back into transform mode. So then I can move those along that new edge angle. And you'll notice that if I, if I add more in, it goes right back to the original. Now, it may seem at first that that's unpredictable or you might want it to stay, but you know, in that previous orientation. But in this case, um, we just find that it kind of works better if you always reset that mode because if we don't reset once you select more entities when you left the tool and came back in 
you could be left in that same old orientation. You probably wouldn't want that. So typically we're finding that you hit the space bar, you pick the face you want, you hit the space bar, and then you move, and then you're kind of done with that movement, right? And then you could pick nothing. And, and the same thing applies for faces. So we could, we could come over here and grab a couple of faces and then do our transform and I don't know, hit the space bar. We could orient to this edge. So right here it says, hey, do you wanna pick this face, this face, or this edge? And I wanna pick that edge. And then I hit the space bar and now I can move along this edge. So that's just allows a lot of flexibility when you're modeling to change that orientation and get all kinds of different directions. I mean, it's all kind of packed into that one transform tool. Now, just, just so um, we're all aware, Alias has a bunch of uh, modification tools for moving vertices, and they all can be found under the um, Move CV tool. So if I go into the Move CV tool, I've got slide, and all these still work, right? You can, you can still choose to use this slide, which is gonna slide basically along that same edge. We could pick multiple, and then we could pick, um, this guy right here allows you to move along any selected edge, right? Or, and, and, derive your vector from that selected edge. So really some similar things to what the new transform enhancements allow. But again, a lot of designers coming from another package, they're used to having access to that little manipulator and all the controls visually. And maybe for an alias user with quite a bit more experience, he's already used to using these tools. So it might not be as, as big of a deal. I've found myself, to be honest, to use that new transform. Um, got a little manipulator and it's kind of kind of interesting. Now, the one drawback you might see to it is that, for instance, if, if I have this object and I set its pivot point over here to the edge and I wanna snap this to this, right, to this point right here, if I use the transform tool with the global manipulator, it puts the manipulator right here. So it's not, it's at the pivot, you know, it's, it's at the centroid of the object and it appears to be the pivot point, but it's not, I moved the pivot point. So if you want to use, um, use this tool to do that kind of operation, I put another transform under my menu. So this is a little bit customized from what you'd see in the default sub D menu. Um, but what I did is I put my, the other transform tool, which is transform in pivot mode. And now when I pick an object, the transform gets put in the pickup uh, pivot point of that object, and then I can easily snap it to this one, right? If I did that with the other manipulator, so if I use this manipulator and I snapped it, it just, it snaps to that's pivot. So we're not using the pivot. So I hope that kind of clears up why you might or, or might not want to use um, one of those two tools. One works with the object's pivot point and the other works with uh, simply the, the centroid of the data. Now, we found a lot, of, a lot of picking was required when moving hoods or features of a car. So we've added selection sets. Now what selection sets allow you to do is, and I'm gonna try not to use the phrase group because grouping an alias is a thing and it involves transformations and all kinds of other things and it changes the hierarchy of our file. Selection sets are just a way to collect objects so that they can be selected together. And here's how you might use that. So I'm just going to grab, um, I'm gonna turn the wheels off for a second because we don't really need them on this car. I'm gonna use some of the hotkeys that we have here. So I'm gonna go with number one, that puts us in box mode. And then I'm gonna go with number four, which turns on our vertices. And those are by default, and those are over here too. So we've we've put the few hotkey items over here. One, two, three, four, and five are the um, new hotkeys for display. So if I wanted to um, maybe make some changes to this hood scoop, well, I'd have to go in and pick a vertex, and depending on how crafty you are, um, I would probably use my grow selection, and then right, right duplicates that. And I'm still in pick vertex, so I'm gonna select this vertice and shift middle mouse button, which is chain select. So now I've got my vertices all selected. So under edit, we've got the create set, and you can either make it a set that's exclusive or multiple. So multiple means the members can be in uh, two different sets and exclusive means these can't be part of any other set. So that just allows you some um, precision when you wanna make some stuff uh, pickable and then never have it pickable in another um, set. 
So I'll hit, I'll say go here and it, and it, it basically just created a set. Now sets are found under the object lister. So right here at the top, they'll always be found at the top and we can open up the little tick mark right there and we've got a new set made and I could call that hood scoop, okay? So now I've got an easy way to pick those and I can get access to picking those by using the new pick. Um, I believe it's under object type Oh, no, it's just right here under selection set. It's got the green brackets around it. So if I go to pick selection set and I, I now grab a vertice, it picks them all. So now I might do something like go to transform. All right, I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to use the control key and I'm going to snap that manipulator, not to that face. That face isn't what I wanted. So I'm just going to go maybe to this edge. Sure, that edge is good. And now go to transform. And actually, I'm going to hit the space bar, and I'm just going to move back here maybe a little bit just to get this where I want to rotate it around. And then I'm just going to rotate these vertices, all right? And we can just easily reverse that um, uh, uh, hood scoop and make it a positive versus a negative. So the selection sets work on anything in Alias. So you can, you can um, make a selection set out of a group of curves, curves and surfaces, objects, curves and surfaces. It's just a way to collect data, and they're going to be found underneath the selection set tab in the object lister. So that's a pretty um, a decent overview of uh, how the new selection sets work, the new sub D workflow, and the new transform tool. And in the subsequent videos, I'll be using a lot of these tools over and over again. So you'll just see those as we as we move forward. So thanks for joining. And I'll talk to you later.